Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's just uh, continue um, where we where we uh, were with uh, this particular RSS, um, Rastafari, our Sabbath studies, number 40, on uh, Balak, on Balak, 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 uh, Balak, the royal Amharic, the Amharic here, or the Giz letters, and the Hebrew, the Hebrew letters. So it's the Torah, the Ori portion, numbers, the first part from Torah is from numbers 22 and 2 to numbers 25, 25 and 9. And we just briefly um, touched on um, these three points that one uh, should, uh, should keep in mind. There's three particular points that need to be uh, kept in mind and it's important to keep in mind. Okay, on Bela'am, Bela'am, there's these three matters that you will often probably come across in the scripture. And without understanding Bela'am, it is also not uh, possible really to understand, well, how does Bela'am figure in prophecy, similar to the Nicolaitanes we see in Revelation. How does all that really connect? Now, Bela'am or Balaam is the English way, but Bamarinya is Be, Le, and then is the Bela'am or Bela'am, 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 or some would say Balaam. Right, the land. Now, there's the way of the land, which is the men get there's the era of the land, the sihitet, and then we have the doctrine of the land, the timherit, the timherit of the land. So there's a teaching of this prophet for hire. There is the error, the error reasoning of this type of prophet for hire. And there is the doctrine of this prophet for high, and this refers to how um, um, Balaam taught uh, teaching Balak to corrupt the people whom he could not curse. In other words, Balaam knew he could not curse the Beit Israel, so instead he opted to, um, as a concession, to teach uh, Balak um, to uh, corrupt this people who could not be cursed. And this brings us to the third matter or the sin at Bial Pior that is contained in this uh, Torah or, or Ri portion. So when we get to chapter 25, um, chapter 25 uh, and um, from 1 to 9, there's something that I would like to share with you. Hold on for a moment. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I hope, <laughs> good one. Uh, I hope you uh, took this down for the RS four forty um, Balak um, Torah portion download. Download the Sabbath House reading uh, PDF um, as well as the um, the Schofield uh, reference study Bible. The PDF could be used on your mobile devices. Um, but we still advise a hard copy would be um, uh, necessary. A hard copy would be necessary. Now, Balak, in, interesting, Balak almost sounds like in Amharic to some uh, Ethiopian um, and Amharic speakers, it sounds like if I did not know, you know, how Balak, Balak, <laughs> Balak, Balak means um, like if I did not know. It could be interpreted like if I did not know. And that, in a sense, does match the character of um, Balak that we have demonstrated in this uh, um, Orit um, 
min bab kufl. But when we look up balak now in the metaphysical Bible dictionary, when we get to balak or b l b a l a k, um, it means emptier. It means waster. It means spoiler. It means devastator or destroyer. And and interesting ignorance 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 figures much like that now. Um, it says a king, a king of a king of Moab, who was frightened because of Israel's victories. He fought against Israel and tried to hire um, Balaam or Balaam to curse the men of Israel that he might defeat that he might defeat them in Numbers 22 and 2 to Numbers 24 and 25. Now, metaphysically speaking, it is an empty, void, and destructive, wasting thought. Ignorance, balak, balak, balak. It's an empty, it's an empty, void, destructive, wasting thought. Emptier, devastator, waster, spoiler, destroyer. That rules the carnal mind symbolically as Moab. Now, Moab, so let's also look up Moab, since the people are the Moabites. So let's get a good groundation on what does Moab mean, both in its literal sense as well as um, metaphysically. Let's go through um, Moab. What do we have for Moab, which, okay, means the seed of the father. Mo, like me in Hebrew, means to come out, Moab, Moab. Ab, or it could be a conqueror of the father too, but the seed of the father coming out from the father, seed of the father, seed of the water, or water of the water flowing from the father, what of the father can also be interpreted in the Hebrew as um, ma'ab or miab, um, what of the father, question, of his father. Now this was a son of Lot, a lot, by his eldest daughter. In other words, a product of a people who are a product of, 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 of incest in a sense. Um, I mean, little incest, not, not uh, royal kind of marriages where for political conveniences, uh, brothers and sisters marry, like in ancient Egypt, when the brothers and sisters in the mo ancient most Egypt married each other, they did not marry in the sense that they had children, but they married each other in the sense of um, symbolically keeping this, this rulership within a certain family, but they had their own wives or husbands and children, but in a figurative sense, they represented the, the royal houses of that particular people, and that was culturally according to those people. But other people, being ignorant of that, actually um, had sex within their own limited bloodline, and this caused a lot of um, balak or, or ignorance. Now, Moab seems to have two sides to significance, metaphysically speaking. Moab who Balak is king of that particular consciousness, means seed of the father, flowing from the father of the father, while Moab represents the body and the most external conditions of life. There is something good in it, or at least a possibility of good. From the top of the mountain in Moab, or Mount Nebo, at the top of Pisgah, Yahweh showed Moses, Musa, the promised land, in Deuteronomy 34 and 1. Now, Herut, Ruth, and I just did a book on um, Ruth. Um, hopefully, it'll become available on our um, on 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 the the, the the books the book site. Um, did a writing on the book of Ruth. It's a very beautiful, very important story. But Ruth represents the love of the natural soul for God, and from whom David and Yeshua, or David, DVD and Yeshua were descended, was a Moabitess. In other words, from Ruth. On the other hand, the text, quote, Cursed be he that doeth the work of Yahweh negligently, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood, is found in Jeremiah 48 and 10. It accompanies a charge from Adonai, Adonai to destroy Moab. Moab here signifies the carnal mind, lust born, turpitude, Interpretude. When the individual enters into the overcoming life, he receives the commission. 
when an individual enters in, now, now this is being now interpreted metaphysically, but this is how we apply this, you understand, being studied and show ourselves to prove how we apply it even to our life, that when an individual comes into the overcoming life or the true life of Christos or true Rastafari comes into that overcoming life, he receives the commission to destroy. The first commission is the commission to destroy. Destroy what, you may ask, to cast out the carnal mind or personal, limited self, the personal, the, the, the kind of a me, you know, me, mine, and that, and the I in that sense is really God's I, not our I. It's the most high, the most I. But it's that me, mine, that selfishness that old time Rastafari sought to cast out by not using me and my and mine and using those terminology which are more selfish, more the I and I, you understand, and the collective, you understand, the collective, the sharing kind of aspect. But this is interesting that the first commission that one who enters um, the overcoming life receives is to uh, cast out the carnal mind or personal limited self. This is the self to which Yeshua or Iesus referred to when he said, if any man would come after me, if any man would come after I, if any man would follow I, to say, let him deny himself. When man takes up this work, he must not be deceitful about it by keeping back part of the price, as Ananias and uh, Sapphira did in Acts chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, or by seeking to save some of the carnal self, the goodliest of it, as Achan did, and see uh, Joshua chapter 7. For if he does these things, he will be cursed. That is, he will not attain the happiness and the peace that come only to the wholehearted and true. This is so very important, my brothers and sisters. Nor may he be negligent in his work of dying to the carnal mind. For the lazy and slothful man will not win the prize that is set before him. And that prize that is set before all of I and I and I and I is the Lalamawi Hewitt is eternal life. So the lazy and the slothful man will not win the prize that is set before him, eternal life. Preservation of the entire man, the entire tripartite man, or man in spirit, soul, and body, how we were created in the image and after the likeness of Yahweh Elohim, after the Elohim, was made in the image and after the likeness, spirit, soul, and body, the Judaic Trinity, or the so-called Hebraic Trinity, some call it the Jewish Trinity, is not a new idea. But the Romanist, Catholic, and, and anti-Christian interpretation, that's where the biggest confusion comes in. You understand? But when we look at it in, in, in truth, we see that man was made in the image and after the likeness of the Almighty. That's why man has a spirit, a soul, and a body. And these three aspects all work together, ahad, as one, as one, as a, as a composite unit. So the sword... In this text of Jeremiah 48 and 10, it represents the Word of God. So when we look at Jeremiah chapter 48 and 10, let's see if we could bring this up by Marinya. Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10. We find, we find it written in the English, it says, Curse. Be he that doeth the work of Yahweh negligently. You understand? With, with, with uh, negligence. Doesn't do the work of Yahweh with, um, with uh, due diligence. Let's go to Bamarinya, Eremias, Tinbete, Eremias, Nerav, Arba, Arba, Cement, Arba, Cement, Kuter, Zeteng, no, Kuter Aser, Kuter Aser. Um, verse 10 of Jeremiah chapter 40. And it says right here, because before that it says, Give wings to Moab, verse 9, that it may flee and get away 
for the cities thereof shall be desolate without any to dwell in them. And Kutarasar and then below, it says, Yegez Yavi Harina Sera Be Chelta Yemiyadega Rugum Yuhun. Seifu Nima Kadema Yemiya Kalekula Rugum Yuhun. Curse be he that doeth the work of Yahweh the sustainer deceitfully. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. And it goes on to verse uh, Asara An, verse uh, uh, 11, which is Moab, ka tanash netua jamro, kima tila nebere, be ama bula wima laya arfu ala, ka ik a wima wode ik a ala tegela betem. What a murkoma la hedem, a silezi, cana wap ursuist a curto al, me azawuma ala telewat, and Moab has been at ease. Moab has been at ease from his youth, and he hath settled on his leaves, and hath not emptied, and have not been emptied from vessel to vessel. You know, like the pouring from vessel to vessel. You know what I'm saying? Neither hath he gone into captivity. Therefore, his taste remains in him, and his scent is not changed. His scent is not changed. And in verse 12 it says, Therefore, Selezi, Neho, look and see. Yemi, Ya, Galabatutina, Ya, um, Yema licker better than when you met Alla Yilala Giziavi here in our Suma Yagalaba Tutala Gano Chunema Bado Yadargalu Mesa Teo Chunema Yisabralu. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the sustainer Yahweh, that I will send to him wanderers and shall cause him to wander and shall empty his vessels and break their bottles. Verse 13 of Jeremiah chapter 48 says, Ye Israel lim beta, ye tamen nabata, kanebroa ka beta lendara endafere, in dihua moaba ka kamosh yafral, and Moab shall be ashamed of kamosh or chemosh, his God, chemosh. You understand? As the house of Israel was a shame of Beta El, their confidence. And this is kind of very interesting seeing that Moab represents this um kind of a carnal a carnal um a carnal mind. And we just stop right there on that portion because keeping this that's very interesting. But we just wanted to get a basic idea of the meta, the metaphysical, the literal of what does Moab mean because who is Balak? Now, we know that his name, Balak, mean like, um, if I did not know. You understand? Like, implying ignorance, but literally, in Hebraic, it's like emptiness and, and wastefulness. We know Moab means seed of the father, and the Moabites, um, like in the Ammonites, and the Moabites were products of the incest that, that Lot's daughters committed when they got their father drunk, and they had sex in the cave and everything like that. So now, now these people come out of that. But now the main point of our study right here, to give a background to the RSS number 40, the Rastafari Sabbath study number 40, the Torah portion known as Balak, Balak right here is Bela'am, Bela'am, Bela'am. This three part of Bela'am, the way of Bela'am, the error and the doctrine of Bela'am. But let's get to the name of Bela'am. Let's begin the name with the name of 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 um Balaam or Bela'am. So when we look up in the metaphysical Bible uh dictionary, um we find Balaam here. It means the Lord of the people. The Lord of the people. It means destruction of the people. It means a pilgrim a foreigner, a stranger. He was the son of Beor, you know, of Beor. He was a native of Petor, of Futur, you understand, in Mesopotamia, in Mesopotamia. You know, that's like the Iran-Iraq region today. He was a prophet or a soothsayer of the Medeanites. 
he was hired by Balak, king of Moab, to curse the Israelites. Instead, he obeyed the voice of Yahweh and blessed them in Numbers chapter 22 and 5 to Numbers 24 and, 5, 24 and 25. Now, though Balaam, Balaam could not curse Israel, although Balaam could not curse Israel, what did he do? Well, even here in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, it says, though Balaam could not curse Israel, he counseled with Balak to lead the Israelites into idolatry and fornication, that they might forsake God and be destroyed. And I submit to you to this very day that this is what's happened with black folks, black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean in this present time, this present age, we can see how the people now, the, the lost sheep, the, the black folks that don't know themselves as they to Israel, they've been led into idolatry, all this bling bling, and not just silver and gold. Silver and gold it has a purpose. You know what I'm saying? But this worship of materialism, of the carnal mind, of vanities, of living revelation puts it in the language of living in the image of the beast living in the image of the beast, and fornication or pornication. Pornication. They've been led into, where all of this is basically this hoochie mama, and I mean, there's a lot of different ways of describing it. I think anyone who lives in this present latter-day time should understand if they don't, well, they need to find out. Now, Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, we have to compare that with Numbers chapter 25, as well as Numbers chapter 31 and 16. So what we're getting in this um, RSS number 40 or this um, um, sabbatical reading and feeding number 40 in Balak is the first part of it. The first part of it. But by the time we get to chapter um, um, 31, we're going to see the second part, how the, the Israelites was led into idolatry and fornication. You understand? Now, metaphysically speaking, Balaam or Balaam, Balaam belongs to the mental sense plane. So when we look at this metaphysically, Balaam belongs to the mental sense plane, the mental sensation plane that is in man. He is a foreigner. He is a Ferengi. He's a Ferengi. He, he's, he's a foreigner. Not just a foreigner because he's white or something like that. We're not saying foreign in that sense, but he has a foreign mind to the true spirituality of God in Christ. You understand? He is a foreigner insofar as the true Israelite-ish consciousness is concerned. He's a foreigner as far as the true um, Hebrew or Ethiopian Hebrew or Israelite-ish um, Labona or the consciousness is concerned. Yet, he represents in our contentious sense nature, which is to say the Medeanite nature, which, though ever striving for the ascendancy, he discerns the superiority of spirit. Even though he's, he's a prophet for hire, he still can see the, the um, superiority of spirit. You understand? He still can, can, can recognize that spiritual supremacy. But he's still striving, you understand, being a prophet for hire. But he cannot fight openly against the truth. So this is these, these prophets for hire types. He cannot fight openly against the truth. So he recognizes. This is like those who recognize what we're about, so they cannot come for frontal assault. You understand? In fact, they even bless us. But they seek to counsel those who wanted them to curse us, how they can corrupt us, so that we will curse ourselves. And this is the condition that this present generation of black folks, you understand, in the Americas and the Caribbean post-civil uh, rights and post-PTSD, uh, post-traumatic slave disorder, are presently in this bling-bling sort of um, 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 do-what-thou-wilt do sort of generation. Now, this discernment which um, Bela'am represents, however, being of the sense man, and reaching no higher in its expression than the phase of the psychical that is governed by the sense mind is deceptive. 
You know, like in court when they say, oh, uh, so-and-so's testimony, it was, uh, it was deceptive. There was some truth to it, but it was deceptive. That means we have to be very careful how we, um, how we deal with even his testimony. In some cases, he has to, he has to obey Yahweh. He recognizes because the incident that happened, he thought he could get around it when he got on his donkey and he tried to go to Balak. You understand? Know when the angel stood in his way with his sword drawn, ready to chop him, and and the she donkey that he was riding, you know, um, saved his life and everything. You know, he basically understood how serious it is. You understand? Know Not to go against the commandment or the word of Yahweh, the El Elohe is Arayel. But being deceptive, because see, Balaam. Let's just highlight this. Balaam, he's not really spiritual. In that sense, he's not really spiritual. This is something you have to understand. He is more what they call um, psychical. He is he is psychical. Balaam has psychical powers. He's a psychic. This is what Balaam is. That means Balaam was given a vision when going into the trance that he could see that above his psychical ascendancy was the spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? He could now see that the Spirit of God was above his present um, spirituality or his, his psychic. He was a psychic, basically, a sidekick for Balak in another sense of it. So this discernment that Balaam represents, however, being of the sense man and reaching no higher in his expression than the phase of the psychical, like a lot of the pastors and preachers out there, they, they, they claim to be spiritual, but a lot of them are just like Balaam. They're not spiritual at all. They are psychical. They are psychical, and that psychical influence is finally toned and finally, finally um, hewn, but they are governed by the sense mind. They are governed by, by the natural mind and the mental mind. They are like, like mental adepts, you understand? But they are not spiritual. They are on they are at the height of the psychic level, you understand? But being governed by the sense mind, they, there is a lot of deception in that. It seeks, this particular mentality that Balaam represents, it seeks in subtle ways to undermine, adulterate, and destroy the Israelitish thoughts that are continually struggling to gain a more perfect comprehension, realization, and expression of truth. This is amazing. This sounds, in a sense, almost like um, Romanism or, or even the present popular pop Christianity and a lot of these um, pastors, preachers, religious reverends, the whatever they want to call themselves, they, they, they just have a grab bag of different titles, and some of them have a lot of these titles simultaneously, even though in the original church these titles were maintained by different folk, but they're, they're, they're like everything to everybody, which means that they're basically deceptive at best. But this sort of, um, this sort of consciousness, because, see, the Bible warns us in the New Testament, it warns us about the way or the menget of Bela'am. It warns us about the era, the Sihitet, or the Sata Masagana, the Sihitet of Bela'am. It warns us about the doctrine or the Tim Herit of Bela'am. Now, in order for us to read the New Testament, really understand and comprehend, well, what does it mean to be able to rightly divide the word of truth, we have to go to the Torah, the Ori, the foundation. And this RSS, Rastafari Sabbath study number 40, Balak, it gives us a perfect opportunity to get the groundation. This is what groundation is all about, the perfect opportunity to get the groundation. So we're learning about Bela'am or Balaam. He is psychical, not spiritual. He's on a high level of, of mental, carnal sense mind. But he recognizes the superiority. He can recognize now when he falls into the trance and his eyes are open up. He can see that the spirit is above. You know what I'm saying? And he can't go any higher than his level. He has to stay in his lower spiritual lane. But for other folks around, he's on a higher level. So he can use his mental influence against, against them. So he's, a, he's this character that we keep seeing. And, and, and you might see this character in your church or have seen this character in the church. They especially excel in, 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 in religion, especially with those who are not learned. And they don't really seek to teach ones. 
You see, the most dangerous thing for the Bela'am is to teach one how he does his, you know, how he does what he does. Because if he taught them, then they would know this already. Now, we have a little bit of time left on this, so let's just get to the fulfillment of this, and hopefully we'll have to get opportunity to return to, 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 to build on that. So, in the end, in the end, all of sense is overcome. In the end, in the fullness of the matter, all of sense, you understand, judging by the five uh, physical worldly senses, is overcome, and its powers of discernment are lifted to a higher plane of activity. We find that this is what's happened to Balaam. He was to curse, but ended up giving a blessing. You understand? Though he counseled later on, you understand? But that being that, we have now the Moabites and the Midianites eventually were defeated, and Balaam, who was fighting with them against the Hebrews, is ultimately slain. Even though he knew what he knew, he did what he did, and ultimately he was slain. Numbers chapter 30, verse 8. So we have the pause for the chorus. Take this down, and we'll return for more. Shabbat Shalom. Send that salam.